productize.go and I promise my colleague Maria will be there for you. All right, so let's begin. Well, if you're just joining us now, thank you for being with us today. Um, let me introduce you to our first keynote speaker, Candice O'Brien. Hi, Candice. Hello, you're there. So Candice, she's the co-founder of The Six a strategy and innovation consultancy that empowers enterprise clients like Google and Cisco, and also startups to ideate and execute quickly for sustainable growth. Candice, she is a passionate, um, she's very passionate about helping organizations build better product services and organizational cultures, leveraging human-centered approaches, including design and vision sprints. Today, she's going to talk about how to redesign your organization to innovation, or for innovation. Um, hi, Candice. How are you? So, hey. hi, Andre. All good. So, let me just tell you that if you have any questions uh, to Candice during the the presentation, you can use the, the the specific Slido that we have prepared to ask questions to to Candice. Again, just scan this QR code and or go to slido.com search for hashtag productized and those questions they will be addressed at the end of the session so this session will take um just uh, just half an hour and um it will be um candice keynote and then the the q a so candice ready when you are i'm just going to put on the, the teaser video and then share the the screen so you can do the presentation sounds great thank you Yeah, okay, so um, Candice, just uh, feel free to, sorry. I think you need to uh, stop sharing. Yeah, I'll do that. Fantastic. Can everyone see my screen? Hey, awesome. Uh, so thanks, Andre, for the introduction. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. So we're going to be talking about redesigning your organization for innovation. So I've got a question for you guys. How would you design the world's most innovative product? Uh, if you could put it in the chat, that would be fantastic. Any thoughts? So what have we got? We've got start with the user, fantastic. Design a different process, great idea. Any other thoughts? Start with the employee, I like that. Find a solution to the problem, talk to prospective clients, be user-centered, uh, find a unique customer customer problem, understand the problem. I think all of these are fantastic ideas and completely correct. Um, but when we're often starting with organizations to design innovative products, we want to start by designing the most innovative organization. From our experience to design truly innovative products, you need to start by designing truly innovative organizations. One of our clients, a high-tech Fortune 100, asked for our help in getting a transformation project back on track. They were creating Supercluster, the world's most innovative AI data-driven service platform. It was conceived as a game changer. 
providing insights at the speed of business. So excited. We rolled our eyes as well when we saw that tagline. Yet after two years of development, thousands of hours of work, and very, very significant investment, this game-changing platform only supported nine data scientists with a very niche use case. So what went wrong? After a few one-on-one -on -one interviews, we discovered that the product team in this organization, and I'll use that term really loosely, had not one but three executive sponsors across multiple functional silos, each effectively running their own project team. Each product, project team was targeting totally different users, had separate metrics, and an altogether separate vision for the product. Not surprisingly, no one could align on priorities or on a path forward. And that situation is not at all uncommon in our experience. We've all probably worked in organizations that are not aligned, where we measure the wrong thing and then the wrong things become priorities. We elevate bureaucracies and we create silos. Our systems and tools shape the way we work rather than the other way around. Our products become more of a reflection of our broken org chart and our, and our divisions than our users' needs. And we can't really fix the product problems till we fix the organizational problems because Conway's law holds true. And to paraphrase, that is the way an organization or a company is organized, its lines of communication, its division, its hierarchies, its bottleneck, is the way everything the company produces will be organized. Innovative organizations are interconnected, dynamic, constantly evolving human systems. Whether it's at the level of a global enterprise, a business unit, your scaled agile or pizza pie team, the goal of organizations is to harness the unique capabilities of a set of humans to understand the needs of other humans and then create solutions for them in a way that delivers collective value. Peter Drucker, the management guru said, the purpose of an organization is to enable ordinary people to do extraordinary things. In high performance organizations, our systems allow us to translate raw inputs or customer problems that we identify through continuous discovery into predictable, reliable, high quality outputs, viable products and services that allow us to achieve strategic outcomes, which are changes in customer behavior that drive success for them, for our business and for society, measured in a metric that really matters to the business. So how do you design such a system that unlocks the best of human potential for innovation? It really starts with making very conscious choices about your systems of work. So organizational design is an ongoing and iterative process of intentionally shaping and aligning the way an entity is structured, its people and its processes in order to deliver on its purpose and strategic objectives. It requires that you're as thoughtful about the way you design the systems, the internal norms or culture in your organization and the processes and tools you use to get work done as you're about designing your products and services. So as leaders or future leaders, and therefore as default organizational designers, what are some levers that you can flex to create your optimal innovation organization? Jay Gilbert's STAR model gives us a really good place to start by focusing on five key areas of organizational design, strategy, structure, process, people, and rewards. The first level is strategy. If you're a leader trying to drive innovation at any level, it's critical to help your team focus by setting the strategic context. You've, I'm sure you've heard this again and again, the why. Why are we here? What's our purpose? Why is it that, what are we doing and why is it important? Why have we made the choices to focus on these innovation domains and opportunities rather than others? And most importantly, what are we going and where are we going? What are the outcomes we're trying to achieve? Simon Sinek says, giving direction is not the same as giving directions. Directions are instructions on how, but direction is the reason why. So aligning teams and keeping them aligned and inspired by the why is job number one as a product leader. When teams lack strategic context, like supercluster, they falter, focusing on outputs, 
How many features did we ship? Were we on time? Are we staying in budget? Rather than outcome, are we actually achieving our strategic goals? So to help the super cluster team get back on track, we conducted a vision sprint. We helped them realign around their core four, their purpose, their vision, their mission, their values. On the su success metrics and the tangible outcomes they needed to measure, as well as the guidelines and boundaries for making effective decisions and prioritizing their work. And I'll share two of those guiding principles or values because I think they're applicable for every organization, every product organization. The first is to start small. The Super Collider team went back to their drawing board to figure out the smallest, simplest, fastest thing they could do to test their solution assumptions and bring the product vision alive with an end-to-end -end use case. The team voted on a sliver of functionality for a single financial report that would provide data on monthly recurring revenue for just one product. And this one capability became a game changer in itself. And it really inspired the team to move forward. And I think the second guiding principle that very important in every product organization is to focus on the outcomes, not the plan. Of course, plans are important, but all of us know from painful experience that nothing ever goes to plan. In the super, a super cluster context, in the dynamic environment in which they were operating, they needed an adaptive planning approach to absorb and react to all of the new information while being flexible about how they could achieve their desired outcomes in their desired timeframe. So the first step was just ditching the three-year roadmap and moving to an adaptive planning cycle that allowed them to test, build and learn, and then reconvene as a team every three months to realign their plans and re rebalance their resources and funding. So when was the last time you had a conversation with your team about strategic context? If you want to see how well your product team is aligned, here's one small test. Get them together and have each member of the team choose two random JIRA tickets or a high priority user story in your backlog. Then have them talk about how each ticket ties back to a corporate strategic initiative, identify what OKRs and KPIs will be impacted if you su successfully complete that task, and then how it ladders back to the mission. If your team is struggling to answer these questions, then one of the questions is, why are you working on those tasks? And another is, how quickly can you set up time to review your strategic context with your team? The second important lever when you're thinking about organizational de design is structure. When projects are failing, the most common response is to shuffle teams and people around. However, messing with the org chart, moving lines and boxes usually has really little effect on improving performance. There's many Harvard Business Review studies that show that reorg fail to deliver value promised at least 80% of the time. So before you try to move people around or find new people, always make it clear to the people you have what's expected of them. Whatever the structure of the organization in which they operate, whether it's a hierarchy, a matrix, uh, it's a flat structure, a, a holacracy, people really crave clarity around the rules their responsibility and their span of control. Ambiguity around roles and responsibility on the super cluster team was killing team performance and accountability and had contributed to a really toxic culture of blame and finger pointing. We facilitated the team to co-create their end-to-end -end operating model, to define the rules to support that model, and then to define the activities, deliverables and metrics for those roles. For the first time in two years, it was really clear what the capabilities were that the team needed, who owned the decisions and the guidelines of how these decisions were being made. This simple but detailed visual operating model really clarified the flow of work, information and governance around their organization and reinvigorated the team to start executing. The third lever of organizational design is process. We like to think of process as a recipe, a set of ingredients, tools and capabilities, and specific steps that help us get the job done more effectively to do deliver value. 
One way to optimize your organization for innovation is to conduct a small whiteboarding session with your teams and consider what your organization would, lo would look like if you use the smallest amount of energy possible to accomplish your most important task. Map out your process today and identify what extraneous steps could be removed, what manual steps could be automated, what unused reports could be eliminated, or unproductive meetings could be permanently canceled. Figure out where is the most friction in your process and how your process drives your outcome. Like software, process shouldn't be over-designed or over-engineered, and it should be refactored often. The other thing I would suggest when considering your, pro your process is shift your thinking from what you want to control in your organization to what energies and capabilities you want to unleash, whether it's greater empathy, greater collaboration, a culture of exper experimentation and learning. Then prototype and test new processes to support these behavior changes and ways of working. The fourth level of organizational design is people. People are what turn great ideas into innovative products into sustainable businesses. It's really important to think holistically about the employ entire employee life cycle, how you create an environment where people actually want to work, where they feel empowered, where they have a sense of autonomy, where the work they do is matched with their skills so they feel a sense of mastery and proud movement, and where they have the psychological safety to share, to fail fast, to learn and iterate. But if there's one phase of the life cycle we recommend companies really obsess about, it's the onboarding experience. How can you set up new employees for success and acclimate them to their position, their team and the organization so they're aligned from day one around your strategic contact and they have a sense of purpose aligned to the organization's purpose. This is especially important in a world of remote work. So a few things to think about when designing for new recruit, recruits. What are your mentor and buddy system options available? What's the leadership management, team building, bonding and communications cadence? What are the organization's values and how are they exemplified by the leadership as they interact with new employees? How can you creatively help employees understand the vision and mission of the company and their role in that vision and mission? And then how do you help them find moments of connection across the organization that contribute to a sense of belonging? What you'll find is if you focus on new employees and create optimized experience for them, you'll create tools and ideas for optimizing the experience for all employees. The fifth and last lever I'll talk about today is reward. Rewards are not just about dollars. If people are being paid at market, generally additional money is not a major motivator. If you wanna boost engagement in your team in less than five minutes, the easiest way is just getting conscious and getting into the habit of acknowledging your team members in real time for things they're doing really well. There have been a series of Gallup surveys on employee engagement that concluded positive attention is 30 times more powerful than negative attention or critical feedback in creating high performance teams and 1200 times more effective than ignoring your employees. But I'm assuming that none of us are ignoring our employees completely. So don't wait for annual reviews, quarterly one-on-ones or every three year or every three years, a 360 degree feedback session. Give praise in real time and people will blossom. So today I talked a bit about intentionally optimizing the design of your organization in order to optimize the design of your products and the five levers you can flex. I wanna leave you with this. As we emerge from the pandemic, organizations and teams have an unparalleled opportunity to take a step back and redesign their systems of work for our next normal, for the hybrid future. During the lockdowns, organizations that needed to pivot their business models also pivoted some of their internal processes. However, most companies simply transplanted existing processes to remote work context, putting the onus on employees to adapt to a life of endless Zoom meetings. The return to the office is potentially going to spark some big conflicts for many organizations as well. 
A study in Newsweek that no noted that while 83% of CEOs want employees to return in person full time, only 10% of employees want to come back full time. So to navigate this potentially tricky period, take time to talk with your team and understand their experience, their experiences with and challenges with remote working and their aspirations for the next normal. Then co-create policies and processes that allow them to do their best work regardless of location. Ensure employees have equitable access to resources like high-speed internet and secure networks. Consider if your organization can provide childcare credits. Almost 3 million women in the US left the workforce in the last year because they were unable to balance work and childcare. It's a major brain drain. So proactively brainstorm ideas to address the power imbalances and the lack of visibility issues that can emerge when one segment of workers is on site and the other is remote. Another area of focus is that logistics will require a lot more thought and planning. Who will be in the office when? What should be mandatory meetings where co-location is required? What types of activities will be necessary for the whole team to be physically present? high stakes meetings or immersive trainings, figure that out and share it upfront. Finally, ensure that you're creating opportunities for moments of connection, cultural ritual, rituals and celebrations to cement bonds and relationships in your organization. In a human system, it's the relationships that matter most. Learning flows from relationships, change flows from relationships, innovation flows from relationships. Thanks so much for your time today. I'm looking forward to your question and hearing stories about your next normal. Thank you, Candice. Um, I'm just going to take the, the screen share and share some of the questions we got on Slido. All right, actually lots of questions. So up for the challenge, Candice? Let's go. Let's go. All right, so Candice, um, we have like a bunch of questions here. So let me just um, maybe start here with, with processes. Um, they create sense of security, but are overwhelming. So this is anonymous, I'm just going to, to read it. So how to take my organization up to focus top managers on outcome instead of delivering tasks? A very common question, right? So the, the management is the issue, how, how do you change that? Yeah, um, I think it really change, uh, it starts with you. Um, so I think one of the first things that you can do is really start figuring out some outcome-based metrics. So if management is um, tracking, you know, how quickly you deliver, um, maybe look at the strategic goals of the organization or the strategic goals of the company and come up with a metric that's really important. So in your organization, it might be, um, lifetime customer value, or for the product, an outcome metric might be something like conversions. And start adding these metrics into your report. Start figuring out what leading indicators and what customer behaviors will support you achieving these metrics. And just start adding it to your information. People are going to start paying attention. So I would say just change what you report about provide the information they're asking for, but also provide some outcome-based measures and metrics. We have this one, which is um, regarding people, why do you, when, when you speak about the work environment, why do you stress so much the onboarding experience? So what we found is generally, if you design a great onboarding experience for people, um, you, keep, you help align them from day one in the organization, and then you can help to keep them aligned. So uh, when managers onboard others, one of the risks you have is that misaligned people misalign others. You don't want people bringing uh, new recruits into your organization who have a different idea about your vision, your values, your strategic context. 
So onboarding forces everyone to align on the story about the organization and what's important in the organization, share that with new recruits. And then that is information that you can reuse to repeat to others in your organization. So if you create a great experience and you create great information for new recruits, this is uh, reusable within your organization to keep everybody aligned around what the mission and vision is. Okay, so um, th this one, I think it's quite interesting. So I've joined the team as a PM intern. What should be my, my very first steps to becoming a, a better or a good PM and team member? Any, any I, thoughts on that? I think the first important thing is um, really talking with your team and uh, understanding what the team is doing, uh, what, the challenge, what challenges the team are facing. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding that your role as a PM is not about managing the backlog and creating uh, user stories, but ensuring that you're giving the team visibility around the strategic context, the market opportunities, the customer insights, and, and making that the focus of your work. But I think um, first and foremost, if you've just joined, building those relationships, building your credibility with the team is really important. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have one for here from Mike, Mike Litoris. I don't know, Mike, do you want to do you want to do it yourself? I'm just going to check here if I I can find Mike. Um here. No. So let's let's just move on here to um actionable things you, you recommend to do right now and maybe this is not just for pms but I, I guess it's for any employee that that really wants to um, innovate or or set up a innovation agenda inside the company so i think if you are um if you're focused on setting up an innovation agenda uh the most important thing that you can do is uh look at yourself critically and figure out where you potentially need to change. Um, do you have a bias to action? Are you bringing new ideas into the organization? You're, you guys are going to learn a lot in these sessions. How are you going to share that within your organization? How are you going to bring these new learnings and new approaches into your, into your organization? How are you going to share your own behavior? Um, don't waste this investment, I think, um, is one of the most actionable things you could do, right? Um, based on what you learn in these sessions, figure out how you're going to change your behavior and how you're going to spread that to the team. All right. So I think there's like time for one more question. Um, and I think this, this one is actually quite interesting due to the you know, our current situation, at least here in Europe, which is any additional practical tips on how to onboard new members remotely so they actually feel connected to the team? So remote onboarding and how to, you know, make it easier? Yeah, um, so I think there's a couple of things, you know, um, one of them is just making materials interesting and accessible. Um, don't send them you know, a hundred page deck with your organization's rules and responsibilities, right? You might want to set up um, something like a round robin with your leaders and managers so uh, that new employees have an opportunity to talk to others in the organization, understand um, what their focus is on, uh, understand their success metrics. Um, so, you know, having that round robin. Having uh, check-ins um, is also important with the employee. Direct managers um, ensuring that you set up time, uh, especially in the first weeks or so, um, to connect with the employee. You know, create a podcast um, that you could share with uh, the employee and then you can share with others in the organization around um, what's important, uh, the vision, the mission, all of those um, uh, strategic um, pieces of information that could be helpful for the employee as well. But the main thing is just making sure that you are spending time making connections 
Um, and also that you're, if possible, attaching them with a buddy or a mentor um, that they can reach out to um, for asynchronous conversation if necessary. Mm -hmm. Right. So before you leave us, um, I think this one is actually um, good because uh, do you have any framework or methodology that you can recommend to help design an, or an organization? And if people want to know more about it, uh, what should they do? How can they reach you and, and the SIX agency? Uh, sure. Um, so feel free to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. Um, it's Candace O'Brien. And i um, happy to share more information uh, with you. Uh, in addition to which, um, I would say uh, Jay Gilbert's STAR model is kind of the seminal uh, document and approach to organizational design mm -hmm. and what's important in organizational design. So I would definitely suggest uh, checking that out. Um, I'd also suggest reading um, some materials like Nine Lies Around uh, Work, uh, for example. And um, that starts giving you good context in terms of areas that, areas that you can focus when you're thinking about organizational design. Amazing. Thank you so much, Candice. Um, thank you so much and also to the audience and the, the question.